people are talking about inflation, I think we're in depression right now. And we're going to be a biggest depression in world history because you can't, the Fed can't not keep printing money and hope it stays afloat because the shadow banking system, what we'll called the, the euro dollar system, is a thousand times bigger than the Fed. They trusted the government. They trusted their pension would be there, and it's going to go bust. The biggest bust in the history of the world is coming up. It's pensions. Look at this chart here. This is Social Security. It goes bust now. Medicare is bust. One of the saddest things about America today is not only are we the biggest debtor nation in the world, but only 20% of our budget went to entitlement. Today in America, it's 75%. We have all of these people saying the government should take care of me. Elizabeth Warren and Comrade uh, Sanders, they all want the government to take care of them. Just as we're going bust. And we're about to get frickin' hammered. If you have friends or family members who are stupid enough to be, be counting on their pension. I think it's the biggest pension fund in America is going broke. Now, that means firefighters, school teachers, public servants, they're all toast. They're going to find out the government screwed them. I was on CNN calling the crash of 2008. I said, Lehman's going down. You can check it out. I said to Wolf Blitzer, Lehman's going down. He got kind of flustered because they're not allowed to say something. Like they don't want what we know out there. So that's why fake is fake money, fake teachers, fake asset. And the asset part, you know where that comes from. The city of London, Wall Street, the derivatives markets, LTCM, long-term capital management records. The answer is inside you, but you have to want to study the CQL resources, understand the source of your revenue, but also another thing called counterparty risk. Like if you own Amazon, the counterparty is Jeff Bezos. You own gold, the counterparty is God. You own silver, the counterparty is God. You own Bitcoin, the counterparty is the network and blockchain. So those are all considerations when you're studying. I'm very optimistic about the future. I'm investing more money in not stocks, but my own startups. But that's what I do. And then I own stocks via the startup. That's how I, but I have control over the board and things like that. So those are some of the differences. And I started early. Everything we're talking about, Wall Street, the Fed, our pensions, and the government is all related. They're all coming from the same source of problems. And I wish it was as simple as take two aspirin and you'll be fine in the morning. Because that's not the answer. There is no easy answer. Even gold, silver, and Bitcoin in a depression, in a market crash, which I say coming, they'll crash, not because they're bad, but because people go into what I call a short squeeze, a liquidity crisis. They need to pay bills, so they're going to sell what is the most liquid. The boomers, my generation, are toast because we're so dependent on this thing called a 401k, which is a defined contribution pension. Now, the defined contribution means if you put in a million bucks, hopefully get a million dollars back. But the old pension plan was called a defined benefit. So if you work for Ford Motor Company and they promise you $1,000 a month, Ford guaranteed the $1,000. And prior to 1971, it was really smart to save money because after 1971, they started printing it. 74 was the ERISA. 74 was a major change. And then it came to 87 stock market crash and a few people understood that the thing about gambling then came the Glass-Steagall. They re repealed Glass-Steagall, I think, around 1995 or something like that. It made commercial banks and investment banks the same. You could gamble. And th there was so much corruption that came when you had investment banks and regular savings banks getting together. So they started putting savings of the savers into the stock market. That's what the repeal of Glass-Steagall did. Then we had the crash of 2000, which they called the dot-com crash. Then came 2008, they call it a subprime mortgage crash, and they blamed the poor people for the crash, but it wasn't the poor people who did it. Again, it was Wall Street, the Treasury, and the Fed, and then they never fixed the problem. And all they did was print more money. So 1971 continued on in mass after 2008. They started coming up with a thing called quantitative easing. And what that quantitative easing was to do was to keep money into the economy, because it was like this huge hot air balloon going in the sky that if that hot air balloon came down, the little gondola was you and me. We'd get crushed. We're still going back to what can you do? Like if my poor dad, when he lost his pension because he ran for lieutenant governor as a Republican, he didn't know what to do. At 50 years old, he found out his PhD didn't help him at all. 
At 50, there was nothing on his fin- He didn't know what a financial statement was. A capitalist is somebody who believes in teaching people to fish. And a socialist wants to give people fish. And then it just, yeah, I just divide them that way. If, if inflation is in asset prices, like the stock market, real estate, we make fortunes. But the working guy out there working for $50 an hour, whatever they work for today, he, he just took a haircut. Then he can't afford to live. And then you have the southern border right, right on our border right here, wide open. People are coming in in droves. They have smash and grabs. This is all stage two communism. It, it is so screwed up, I can't believe it. That was capitalism. Stage one was socialism. They couldn't accept communism at first. So what Marx says, we have to put in socialism as stage one, stage one. So that was social security. You know, everybody's now on Medicare, welfare and all that. We're now a welfare nation. So stage one, which is socialism, completed the fractional reserve system and bank reserve currency, which is macro macro. That's where the heist took place. What happens is during when communists take over from socialists, they murder the socialists. If you look at history, every time communists took over, the first people they kill are the intellectuals. And that's about to start. You know, all Wall Street in America has done is rip off the pensions because, you know, pensions are the biggest pool of money in America. And states like Kentucky, New Jersey, Illinois, California, Hawaii are going bankrupt because Wall Street went in and just sucked all the cash out of their pension. So the school teachers like my dad, the firefighters and police officers, they have no retirement. And so that's why it's fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. They're the same system. If you're not going to study, you're not going to practice and all that, then you should do what Wall Street tells you to do. Buy, you know, 401ks, mutual funds, ETFs and all that. But that, that's where they're fake assets because they only make Wall Street or the city of London rich. Just watch where the cash is flowing. Follow the money. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.